Let's get him in the middle. Hi guys. It is a uh, gorgeous winter day here in the middle of April here uh, in the Orwellian police state lockdown of Garfield, Texas here on this lovely but chilly and windy Monday morning, April 13th, 2020. And I am Sam Mitchell. This is my little shivering co-pilot, Sancho Panza, bringing you the Monday morning, April 13th, 2020 edition of the Corona Panic <coughs> Chronicles. Uh, and I want to thank our sometimes alert, sometimes not so alert, good old lovable book hermit for uh, coming up with today's Chronicle of the Collapse. And good Lord, it was, I mean, Chronicle of the Corona Panic. Uh, it was a tough choice. I really appreciate you guys sending me all of these <coughs> articles. But before I get into book hermits, uh, submission right here this morning off of the uh, <laughs> NBC News and, and you can draw your own dots between this story and Mad Max <clears throat> starving angry and cannibalistic America's rats are getting desperate amid corona panic Yes, America's rats are being hit hard by the corona panic as millions of Americans are locked down by the Orwellian police state indoors to combat the deadly virus, <clears throat> including restaurants and, I'm sorry, many businesses, including restaurants and grocery stores have closed or limited operations, cutting off many rodents' main source of food. <clears throat> On deserted streets across the country, rats are in dire survival mode, experts say. Yes. Uh, all right. And here is the, the meat of this story, as it were. All right. <clears throat> Uh, this is, who is this, uh, this interview, Bobby Corrigan, an urban rodentologist, Bobby Corrigan, an urban rodentologist, <clears throat> quote, a restaurant all of a sudden closes now, which has happened by the thousands and not just New York City, but coast to coast and around the world. And those rats that were living by that restaurant someplace nearby and perhaps for decades having generations of rats that depended on that restaurant's food. Well, life is no longer working for them and they only have a couple of choices, close quote. And those choices are grim. They include cannibalism, <clears throat> rat battles, and infanticide. Quote, it's just like we've seen in the, just like we have seen in the history of mankind, where people try to take over lands and they come in with militaries and armies and fight to the death, literally, for who is going to conquer that land? And that's what is happening with rats. A new army of rats comes in, and whichever army has the strongest rats is going to conquer that area. Close quote. Rats whose food sources have vanished will not just move into other colonies and cause fights over grub, they will also eat one another. Quote, rats are mammals just like you and I. And so when you are really, really hungry, 
you're not going to act the same. You're going to act very bad, usually. So these rats are fighting with one another. Now the adults are killing the young in the nest and cannibalizing their pups. Close quote. And if anybody uh, does not uh, understand the dot connecting between that story and Mad Max, when people are, are get really, really hungry. Okay, and this will be our segue to Book Hermit's uh, choice for today's uh, Chronicle of the of the collapse from the good old New York Times <clears throat> dumped milk, smashed eggs, plowed vegetables, food waste of the corona panic. <clears throat> Guys, th th this is how completely mad this has gotten. So you understand what you're getting ready to hear has nothing to do with the direct health threats of coronavirus on humans. It has everything to do with the Orwellian police state reaction to it. This is just the latest consequence of these lockdowns of the global industrial economy and you wonder why we're uh, seeing Mad Max already cranking up uh, over there in Sub-Saharan Africa, where obviously it was going to crank up. Okay, take it away, the New York Times. <clears throat> in Wisconsin and Ohio, farmers are dumping thousands of gallons of fresh milk into lagoons and manure pits. I just had an email from a, a buddy down in Florida where they're dumping thousands of gallons of perfectly good fresh milk into lagoons and manure pits. An Idaho farmer has dug huge ditches to bury one million pounds of, you know, perfectly good onions. And in South Florida, a region that supplies much of the eastern half of the United States with produce, tractors are crisscrossing bean and cabbage fields, plowing perfectly ripe vegetables back into the soil. After weeks of concerns about shortages of food in grocery stores, and mad scrambles to find the last box of pasta or toilet paper roll, many of our nation's largest farms are struggling with another ghastly effect of the corona panic. They are being forced by the Orwellian police lockdowns, they are being forced to destroy tens of millions of pounds of fresh food that they can no longer sell. And here we go with the racks. The closing of restaurants, hotels, and schools has left farmers with some farmers with no buyers for more than half of their crops. And even as retailers see spikes in food sales, to Americans who are now eating nearly every meal at home, the increases are not enough to absorb all of the perishable food that was planted weeks ago and intended for schools and businesses. The amount of food waste is staggering. <clears throat> the nation's largest dairy cooperative, Dairy Farmers of America, estimates that farmers are now dumping as many as 3.7 million gallons of milk every day. A single chicken processor is smashing 750,000 unhatched eggs <clears throat> every week. 
Many farmers say they have donated part of the surplus to food banks and Meals on Wheels programs, which have been overwhelmed with demand, uh, you know, by hungry Americans. This is right here uh, in this country. But there is only so much perishable food that charities with limited numbers of refrigerators and volunteers can absorb and the cost of harvesting, processing, and then transporting produce and milk to food banks or other areas of need would put further financial strain on farms that have seen half of their paying customers disappear. Exporting much of the excess food is not feasible either, farmers say, because many international customers are also struggling through the corona panic and recent currency fluctuations make exports unprofitable. This is Paul, uh, Paul Allen from R.C. Hatton who had to destroy millions of pounds of beans and cabbage at his farms in South Florida and Georgia, quote, it is heartbreaking and I might say completely unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. <clears throat> the widespread destruction of fresh food at a time when many Americans are hurting financially and millions are suddenly out of work is an especially dystopian turn of events, even by the standards of a global pandemic. It reflects the profound economic uncertainty wrought by the corona panic and how difficult it, it has been for huge sectors of the economy like agriculture to adjust to such a sudden change and how they must operate. <clears throat> Even as Alan and other farmers have been plowing fresh vegetables into the soil, they have had to plant the same crop again, hoping the economy will have restarted by the time the next batch of vegetables is ready to harvest. But if the food service industry remains closed, then those crops also may have to be destroyed. Farmers are also learning in real time about the nation's consumption habits. The quarantines have shown just how many more vegetables Americans eat when meals are prepared for them in restaurants than when they have to cook vegetables for themselves. <clears throat> Quote, people don't make onion rings at home, said Shay Myers, a third generation onion farmer whose fields straddle the border of Oregon and Idaho. Myers said there were no good solutions to the fresh food glut after his largest customer, the restaurant industry, shut down in California and New York his farm started redistributing onions from 50 pound sacks into smaller bags that could be sold in grocery stores. He also started freezing some onions, but he has limited cold storage capacity. With few other options, Myers has now begun burying tens of thousands of pounds of onions and leaving them to rot in the trenches, quote, there is no way to redistribute the quantities that we are talking about, he said. Over the decades, the nation's food banks have tried to shift from offering mostly processed meals to serving fresh produce as well, but the corona panic has caused a shortage of volunteers at food banks, making it more difficult to serve fruits and vegetables, which are time consuming and expensive to transport. Said Janet 
Poppendeck, an expert on poverty and food assistance, quote, to purchase from a whole new set of farmers and suppliers, it takes time, it takes knowledge, you have to find the people, develop the contracts. The waste has become especially severe in the dairy industry where cows need to be milked multiple times a day regardless of whether or not there are buyers, major consumers of dairy like public schools and coffee shops have all but vanished, leaving milk processing plants with fewer customers at a time of year when cows produce milk at their fastest rate. About 5% of the country's milk supply is currently being dumped, and that amount is expected to double if the lockdowns are extended over the next few months. Before the corona panic, the dairy men's processing plant in Cleveland would produce three loads of milk, or around 13,500 gallons for Starbucks every day. Now the Starbucks order is down to one load every three days. For a while after the corona panic took hold, the plant collected twice as much milk from farmers as it could process, keeping the excess supply in refrigerated trailers, said Brian Funk, who works for Dairy Men's. <clears throat> but eventually, the plant ran out of storage. So one night last week, Funk worked until 11 p.m. fighting back tears as he called farmers who supply the plant to explain the predicament. He told them, quote, we're not going to pick up your milk tomorrow. We don't have any place to put it. One of the farms that got the call was the Harsushi Dairy Farm, which has nearly 200 cows on a plot of land in northern Ohio. A week ago, Rose Harshu, who runs the farm with her family, watched her father-in-law flush 31,000 pounds of milk into a lagoon. It took more than an hour for the milk to flow out of its refrigerated tank and down the drain pipe. Yes. For years, dairy farmers had struggled with low prices and bankrupt. Quote, this is one more blow below the belt. Yes. Uh, to prevent further dumping, farming groups are trying everything to find places to send the excess milk, even lobbying pizza chains to increase the amount of cheese on every slice. Yes, but there are logistical obstacles that prevent dairy products from being shifted neatly from food service customers to retailers. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, this goes on and on about the dairy. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Those same logistical challenges, you know, in the dairy industry are also bedeviling poultry plants that were set up to distribute chicken to restaurants rather than stores. Each week, the chicken processor Standard Sanderson Farms destroys 750,000 unhatched eggs, or 5.5% of its total production, sending them to a rendering plant to be turned into pet food. Last week, the chief executive of Sanderson Farms, Joe Sanderson, told analysts that company officials had even considered euthanizing chickens to avoid selling them at unprofitable rates, though the company ultimately did not take that step. In recent days, 
Sanderson Farms has donated some of its chickens to food banks and organizations that cook meals for emergency medical workers, but hatching hundreds of thousands of eggs for the purpose of charity is not a viable option, said Mike Cockrell. I love it. The, uh, the uh, Mike Cockrell, the company's chief financial officer, don't you love it that Sanderson Farms uh, chief financial officer is named Mike Cockrell. Quote, we are set up to sell that chicken. That, meaning donating it to food banks, would be an expensive proposition. Yes, it would. That all of this talk about chicken and milk is making me hungry and I got to uh, go uh, break out some of that 47 cent per pound uh, factory farmed chicken that I bought at Walmart. Uh, anybody who thought that the corona panic was going to result in food getting more expensive at grocery stores. I, I, I mean, the, the bottom has fallen out of the, uh, the chicken market. 47 cents a pound for chicken at Walmart this week, guys. A, a gallon of gas, I paid, what did I pay? $1.39 for a gallon of gas, 47 cents for a pound of chicken. I think, was it $2.68 for a gallon of milk? Anyway, we need to go get some chicken. Anybody want to go eat some chicken? Anyway, if you enjoyed uh, uh, this little uh, <clears throat> chronicle of the Corona Panic, please spend a few seconds over here thumbing it up. And if you would like to uh, subscribe, that would be great because uh, I am losing more subscribers than gaining uh, subscribers. Cannot imagine why. <clears throat> Bye, guys.